You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Why is... Well, I... TV Crazy Man here. Today I have pieced together the funniest and silliest bloopers and goofs possible that I have found so far from the 1950s and 1960s era of classic television. This includes actor bloopers cut forever from the original episodes aired and goofs that made it into the final cut. Be prepared to go where no man has gone before. Well, actually, I guess everybody's goofed up at least once or twice. Maybe I'll even fix a few goofs of my own on this video. You people buy an entire island of Manhattan for the same price. Ah, it was a lousy deal, Chief. In a hundred years, they won't get a nickel for the place. You'd be surprised at what could go wrong filming a TV series. Even the great actors like Frank Dacova, who played Wild Eagle on F Troop. He delivered some of the funniest lines on that show. Voting is one of the processes of American democracy. Oh, voting means taking land away from Indians. <laughs> you want India attack? We give you Indian attack. Cost you $20. So what could possibly go wrong with an actor of that level of comedic timing? No, white man very smart about real estate. Remember when you first come here? This one's entire Kaui territory. Then you make treaty, we divide land. Holy. In the future, there's a lot more gizmos and a lot more things that can break, like automatic doors, which can be a real headache. Very good. Let them pass. Remember this hilarious show, McHale's Navy, that was set in World War II? It starred Ernest Borgnine, Tim Conway, and Joe Flynn, among a lot of other great classic TV stars. This clip is part of uh, one of Dick Clark's bloopers shows. The laughter in the background comes from his show. Uh, the guys didn't know the camera was rolling, and for no apparent reason, they just started bursting out in the song. <laughs> it's pretty cool. This next goof came from my Twilight Zone goofs video, and in it, I made a goof that I'm going to try to fix when I get to that part. In the episode, Perchance to Dream, Edward Hall is a 35-year-old man with a heart condition who fears his next nightmare will be his last. In reality, the actor Richard Kant in this episode was 49 years old. Well, a lot of people called me on this one. Apparently, it's not Richard Kant. According to uh, Google print... The pronunciation is Richard Conte. I've noticed that in The Twilight Zone, they had a habit of using older actors to play younger characters, and it seems like most of the male characters, but not all, were usually designated as 30-somethings. Age 35, occupation draftsman, single, heart condition, no history of mental disease. What I thought was a little off was the man has a heart condition. He's scared to death of dying. So much so that he's afraid if he falls asleep and has one more nightmare, he will die. Yet this man with a heart condition still smokes. I wonder if it had anything to do with the sponsor. 21 great tobaccos make 20 wonderful smokes. <laughs> a lot of viewers commented on this clip that during this time, no one knew that cigarette smoking was harmful. And that's actually a bit more nuanced. You see, the cigarette companies went out of their way to make people believe their product was healthy. And yes, a lot of doctors smoked as well. But evidence was mounting even since the 1930s that smoking may be harmful. It was the growing awareness of the ill effects of smoking, though, that got the cigarette companies to putting doctors on their billboards next to cigarettes. Well, you know the old saying about protesting too much. By 1953, the Journal of American Medical Association had decided to stop accepting cigarette ads and banned cigarette companies from exhibiting their products at their conventions. Apparently, a majority of doctors did not approve of such ads, and doctors were even starting to give up smoking themselves after examining all the evidence. 
By 1957, Surgeon General Leroy E. Burney declared the official position of the U.S. Public Health Service was that the evidence pointed to a causal relationship between smoking and lung cancer. I know a little bit about the subject on a personal level. I quit years ago after smoking for more than a decade. It took like a miracle from God Almighty to help me to quit, so I can relate to how hard it is to kick the habit. No judgments. Just saying, it's certainly worth the headache to quit. Lieutenant, notify Starfleet as to our... Go. Lieutenant, notify... <laughs> Bob. Bob, don't cut. Don't cut. Bob, just... I'm going home. I'm going to spend three hours on the makeup table. Putting this makeup back on! And it's your fault! Your position. We're locked onto your coordinates. We are prepared to beam you aboard. Captain. You forgot all about the environment and all that stuff. Do you want to really do that? <laughs> Taylor. Here's one everybody remembers where Superman has been shot at with no effect. He decides to duck when the bad guy throws the gun in frustration. This was actually Reeves' stunt double, Dale Van Sickle, who ducked. This mistake happened in the mind machine. Of course, normally Superman would not duck when the bad guy throws the gun at him. In the news, the first lady, Mrs. Truman, attempts to christen the plane. Now keep your eye on the officers down in front. I mean, they've been through wars. Now watch them duck for cover. Whoop, watch out. <laughs> your eye on the left there. Men with a hammer coming up. There you go. I saved the day. How do you like this bubble brain? In the short, a merry mix-up. We have three sets of Stooge brothers. I think this short was pretty neat. Now the Stooges have, had done this sort of duplicate thing in the past, but I don't think they had done quite so many Stooge duplicates in one episode as they did in this one. And it was pretty cool. I'm Lewis. I'm Jack. I'm Max. I'm mortified. Unfortunately, they still managed to have a goof slip in on them. I'm assuming they used some sort of split screen technique with a combination of stand-ins. In one scene, we can clearly see Joe's stand-in. And you can tell it ain't Joe. Well, what I'm gonna do for you? Yeah? Barbara Hutton didn't do for Ruberosa. I was Booberosa? You're California bound. <laughs> you want to do for me what Barbara Hutton yeah. Rosa, did for Ruba Rosa? Ruba Reza. Everybody talk to each other. This next goof Perry White didn't think was very funny. Now, in one scene, Clark Kent and Perry White are locked in a couple of steamers by some bad guys, and White passes out. Clark Kent busts out of the steamer and the wooden top basically blows up and whacks white in the side of the head. Now check out the look on his face that he makes while he's supposedly passed out. Has everybody around here gone crazy? <laughs> this next scene from Have Gun Will Travel is probably the most hilarious use of a stuntman in a scene that I've ever seen. Hey, which way did I go? I wanted to rule the world from Mars. I like the looks of that place. When the Joker lands his UFO, Alfred, played by Alan Napier, appears to hit his head for real on the top exit door when he's exiting. Since they're keeping it in anyway, they should have added one of those Batman sound effects. I wanted to rule the world from Mars. I like the looks of that place. Holy head bumps, Batman! Look at all this. Oh. Now it's time for a commercial. A commercial blooper, that is. This is how it aired on television. It's George. The way it's supposed to look, anyway. Right. It took a little while to get there. George, I... They can't eat without me. But why won't they eat? Look at all this food. Well, so far, so good. Watch this. It's George! 
<laughs> Adam West had poor peripheral vision when wearing the Batman mask, and he ended up bumping his head against the archway leading to Lord Fogg's dungeon while on his way to rescue Batgirl. Batman's keen wit and sharp reflexes prevented the doorway from delivering a knockout blow. This is a red Hi, from one of TV's one first kids kids shows, Space Patrol. Get a lot of it right here. Breakfast with wheat checks or rice checks or both. As different as a guided missile from Mercury. That's checks for you. Different because they're bite sized and so swell tasting. Space Patrolers call them super terrific. <laughs> The most delicious fruit and cereal treat ever. It's a post, a raisin, a bran. The only cereal on earth that gives you, oh, damn it. <laughs> and that's the kind of raisins you get right in with the crisp, delicious flakes in a post, a raisin, a bran. Ask mom to get this swell new, oh, oh. It's hard to believe that professionals such as were involved in the Stooges production could have had the occasional blooper, but they weren't real big on retakes back then, and things moved so fast on a typical Stooges short, who would ever notice? Like on the short Fright Night, it isn't usually typical for a bad guy to give the cue for the best time to knock him out, but if you listen real close, you can hear Cy si Shindell as the henchman yell, Now, Shimp, when it's time for him to get the bonk on the head. Is he or dad or he's saying, oh, sh well, never mind. I sure hope that was a rubber axe. In the short, all gummed up in 1947, when Emil Sika has a mean old landlord is yelling at the Stooges, he goes up the line, you haven't heard the last of me yet. He says instead, you haven't heard of me. Then continues with the last of me yet. You haven't heard of me and last of me yet. You haven't heard of me and last of me yet. Down, man. In that same short, it looks like Moe is mouthing Larry's line as Larry is speaking it. Ow! Unless you veer off, I shall blow my brains out. In the short Blunder Boys, Chimp is riding a mechanical horse and gets thrown into the ceiling. As he falls back down, his stuntman's wig falls off. Either Dad or Shimp had a sudden attack of baldness and didn't want the public to know. Jim, I'm fine, boss. Are you all right? Fat <laughs> <laughs> <Right> again. Stay with me. And you know, Peter Pan is made to stay good as gold, fresh and moist, any time at all, from the first big swoop off the top of the jar, right down to the last little bit at the bottom. So for happy young faces, at all times, make sure you've got Peter Pan peanut butter on hand, at good times, all times, or do you? Hurry! Hurry! <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to curl my head. David, please. I beg your pardon. Guys. In the episode Divide and Conquer, the episode where Superman splits himself into two, Superman breaks a wall and is covered in white dust. Then he jumps on top of a bomb, covering him with even more debris. A moment later, he's completely clean. The script. Picked up a horse once. You want me to show you? Yeah, let me see you do it. <laughs> I'd like to have seen him lift that horse too. Well, anyway, back to the news. Illicit traffic, and that they cramped down. I mean, to us. I mean, there was much papers. I mean, there were times. I mean, they 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 think that I should handle. Now, as far as the profit is concerned, I mean, it leaves me hardly any profit at all. I mean, there, so I mean, when I get through with my day's work, 
I just actually, I mean, I put in the time, but as far as the money is concerned, I mean, it so leaves me so little, I mean, Ed, I mean, it'll take home. I wonder if this guy is running for president. You know, sometimes it's the small things that can be really aggravating. You know, there are safety rules, even in your business. What I mean, Jimmy, darling, is I don't want you to take any unnecessary chances. I mean, you've got to come back to me, Jimmy. I can't get this damn lighter to work. My turn. You can fly anywhere at an unbelievably low cost. Just go to eat. Now you think about that now, because this is the Twilight Zone. In the episode, Mr. Dingle the Strong, Burgess Meredith picks up Don Rickles over his head, and well, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I got nothing. Clearly this was not Burgess Meredith or Don Rickles doing this stunt. Yeah, despite the fact that Burgess Meredith did train Rocky Balboa, I don't think that's him. Know me very well. I don't steal jokes. I'm an ad lib comedian. I'm an ad lib comedian. Yeah. You could lean against a stove and something. I'm supposed to. <laughs> you could. You. Well, if there. you leaned against the stove, you couldn't get a blister. No. no, no, no. You couldn't ad lib a blister if you leaned against a hot stove. In his own twisted and distorted lexicon, he calls it faith, strength, truth. But in just a moment, Peter Vollmer will apply his... You know, I can really relate to some of these actors. Ever since I've been doing these videos, sometimes I have to do takes like, I don't know, five times before I get one sentence right. And you wouldn't believe the words I create out thin air. Words that, that never existed in the history of man. I'm not afraid of you. I'm afraid of you. You've been here less than 12 hours and you've caused more chaos than we have ever had as well. Was you with the other guy? You believe that the situation, the deterioration of the Mitri situation is a product of the deterioration of the Polycan situation. And the Polycan situation has deteriorated since May or June 1966. Daylight, I'll give you a four hour start and enough time to circle the flats and get across the plateau. Fine, we'll be there. Good. We'll see you. <laughs> well, Marshal, I want to thank you for all your help. Sure. And uh, by the way, them credentials I give you, I might have need of them. Oh, yeah. Sure. Mm. Oh, 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 you already got them, Henry. Oh, 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 oh. Young man. Who? <laughs> ah, now, take it easy, young man. I'm harmless. Oh, you're harmless? I'm glad to meet you. I'm Clem Cadillac. No, no, no. <laughs> My name is Throckmorton. J.P. Throckmorton. No kidding. Say, that's a mighty fine-looking cow you have Isn't that a hunk of beef for you? No <laughs> kidding, oh, boy. That's a night cow. Right. <laughs> Get rid of 
Well, I hope you found something that made you laugh and all that. Remember, a merry heart is like medicine, or as some folks put it, laughter is good medicine. So if you know any clean jokes, post them in the comments and post your memories of classic television. Please hit the like, it helps the video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out my other classic TV videos. <laughs>